This is part 22 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to customize view discovery in ASP.NET Core. This is the same example that we worked with in our previous video. Notice from the details action method, we are calling this view method. And from the IntelliSense, notice we have four overloaded versions of this view method. So if we use this overloaded version, which does not take any parameters, or this overloaded version, which takes the model object as a parameter, by default, MVC looks for a view that has the same name as the action method. So in this case, MVC looks for a view with name details.cshtml because we are returning a view from the details action method. And it looks for that view in home folder because we are within the home controller. And MVC looks for that home subfolder in the views folder. That's the default view discovery convention in ASP.NET Core MVC. So when we run this project, we see the details view that we have in the home folder. Now, if we do not like this default convention, we can change it. Here is what we want to do. I'm going to have a view file with name test.html in the home folder. In the view, let's include an h1 element in the body section with text test.cshtml from views slash home. Now here is what we want MVC to do. By default, when we return a view from the details action, MVC is going to look for a view file with the same name as this action method. That is, it's going to look for details.cshtml. Instead, we want MVC to use this view file test.cshtml. This is when we use this overloaded version of the view method that takes view name as the parameter. So we specify the view that we want to use. In our case, we want to use test. So let's specify test without the extension. That is, we do not specify the file extension .cshtml. Let's save all these changes. And when we reload this page, notice we see test.cshtml from views slash home. At the moment, using this overloaded version of the view method, we are specifying a view name. Using the same overloaded version, we can also specify a view file path. Let's understand this with an example. I'm going to add a new folder to our project. Let's name this folder my views. To this folder, let's add a view file. Let's name it test.cshtml. As usual, let's include an h1 element in the body section with text test.cshtml from my views folder. Now we want MVC to use this view file test.cshtml file from my views folder when we return a view from this details action method. So this is when we specify an absolute path instead of a view name. So we want MVC to look in my views folder and within that folder we have a view file with name test.cshtml. So here we are specifying an absolute path and when we specify an absolute path we also have to specify the file extension that is .cshtml. Let's save all our changes and reload this web page. Notice now we are using test.cshtml from my views folder. With this absolute path in place, we are telling MVC to look for view files in this folder, my views, instead of the standard views folder. With this variation of absolute path, we are telling MVC to look for my views folder in the root project directory. There are other variations as well. We could simply use my views like this, or we can also use a forward slash or tilde forward slash. All these variations does the same thing. Look for my views folder in the root project directory. Instead of specifying an absolute view file path, we can also specify a relative view file path. To demonstrate that, let's add another folder to this views folder. Let's name it test. To this folder, let's add a view file. Let's name it update.cshtml. As usual, let's include an h1 element in the body section. And the text here is going to be update.cshtml 
from views slash test folder. So now what we want to obviously do is use this view file update.cshtml with the details action method. By default, MVC looks for a view file in the home folder because the controller name is home controller. Now for us to be able to use this update.cshtml from the test folder, first we have to tell MVC to move one level up in the folder hierarchy. We tell that by using dot dot for slash. So this is going to take us from the home folder level to the views folder. From there we want to come to the test folder. So we specify test which is the name of the folder and then the name of the view. The name of the view is update. We are using a relative path here and not an absolute path. With relative path we don't specify the file extension. So let's save all our changes and reload this web page. Notice we see update view from views slash test folder. Using this relative file path technique, let's try to use this view file that is test.cshtml from my views folder. Now to be able to achieve that, we will have to go back up two levels in the folder hierarchy. That is from the home folder, we have to go back to the views folder. From there, we want to go back to the root project directory. So if we want to use the relative file path technique for that, we specify dot dot forward slash twice. We are in the root project folder now. From there, we want to come to my views. So let's specify the name of the folder. And in that folder, we want to use test view. Again, this is a relative file path, so we do not specify the file extension, just the view name. Let's save our changes one more time. And then reload this page one last time. Notice we see test view from my views folder. We are going to use the default MVC conventions. I'm going to delete all these test files and folders. I'm also going to change the code here to use the view method that does not take any parameters. If we use one of these two methods to return a view from a controller action method, by default MVC looks for a view file with the same name as the controller action method. If you do not like the default MVC convention, then you can use this overloaded version. It looks for a view file with your own custom name. With this overloaded version, we can specify a view name or a view file path. View file path can be absolute or relative. With the absolute file path, file extension must be specified. With the relative path, we do not specify the file extension. We have another overloaded version using which we can pass both the view name and model data. We'll discuss passing data from a controller to a view in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.